Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Mile Shop and we're finally done. The USS Missouri and 1200 scale by Trumpeter is finished. Uh, sorry for the delay. In between the last video and this video, there were the holidays. Uh, there was also a ton of detail work that needed to be completed that uh, didn't make for very good content. Uh, so there wasn't really a good way to produce a video in between now and then. So in this video, what you're going to see is the final little steps, just the last big items being assembled and put on and then uh, we're going to go ahead and take a good look at the ship. I want to go ahead and thank everybody who's followed and subscribed and hung out for the last, I think we're coming up on two years here, uh, there was a little reset on my account a while back, uh, but um, yeah about two years into this build. I work full time, I travel for work, I'm not home very much. If I was home full time, uh, seven days a week, just had a normal nine to five job like everybody else, I think I probably would have had this ship done in a year or under a year and still at the caliber that uh, you'll see here today. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I am going to, I have plans for some follow up videos after this. We're going to go ahead and compare the uh, Missouri to the Arizona. So look for that to come out eventually. And then I also kind of want to do like a summary build video where I take all the highlights from videos one through now, which I think this is 29. and just put a quick this is how the whole thing went together video and then within that video I'll just in the description around each section say this is video one this is video two video three so if you see something uh, down the road that you want to quickly reference uh, it, it's kind of like a glossary video to tell you how to get to that part anyway I want to thank you all once again for subscribing and watching thank you for all the tips thank you for all the suggestions there's there's too many names of people that are in the comments that uh, had great things to contribute and things to say that helped me with this build and that will help me in future builds. I really appreciate that and I'm grateful for it. So anyway, without further ado, uh, let's, let's finish the ship up and talk about it. Thanks for watching. All right, so like I mentioned before, we have to go ahead and install all these little details. A lot of it has to do with these ladders that attach from the main deck to the O1 and O2 deck, obviously. You can't attach those in advance. So there's a whole slew of these that run all over the ship. And at this point, this is this is a good area where we can go ahead and attach all those little details. So I did this like a dozen times. Uh, finally, we can go ahead and start installing our bofers. And uh, this is a, a satisfying process uh, to finally get to this point to be able to put these things in. Later on I don't show it but I actually go ahead and get the decals on them uh, so that they're numbered. Um, I used uh, railroad decals that were the right scale to number them 1 through 20 on the appropriate side. I think you'll get glimpses of it later on as we press on with the build here. Just a little bit of sea egg we'll put some in place. Finally, the 35-foot uh, whip antennas. There were several of these that kind of went on the outside of everything, and yeah, you you don't want to be knocking those off. So I saved them until right about this point. I figured this is where they can go in. If you could kind of tell, I'm starting from the inside upper part of the superstructure and working my way down, so I can rest my pinky on things, so I can get like these ammo cases in position, for example. You see on the right there, my pinky's resting on that deck. And that helps install things. Five-inch guns. I uh, was very pleased to put these on as well at this point. I'd had them on and off a gazillion times and figured out what angle I wanted them all at. And uh, just put a little CA glue and dropped them into position. I, th I think I technically made about three-quarters of them correct with the ladders on the right side. The, uh, um, they are directional per the real thing, but it doesn't really matter. Here we're installing the Orlikan cannons. These are a huge pain in the rear and my least favorite part of this entire build. Uh, I think I made 49 of them. And not only were they difficult and tedious to assemble, but they were difficult and tedious to install, as you can kind of see here. Uh, once they're done, though, they provide a lot of detail and give a lot of life to the ship. So, yes, it was worth it in the end, but n no. <laughs> I do not look back on this part of the build with any kind of fondness at all. I'm glad it's over with. So, But they look good. That's That's kind of the whole point. All right, so... 
here I'm I've mixed together some milliput and I'm just rolling it out into little spaghetti strands, really thin, like you see in the upper left. And I'm gonna dice them up into tiny little pieces. Uh, these kind of ended up turn out looking like pillows, but the idea is these are gonna be my floaters that go in the floater baskets. Uh, mixed them up, got the uh, weather deck blue here. I'm just gonna dump them in and stir it all together. I know there's some aftermarket ones that I could have purchased and were designed to fit and drop right into the baskets themselves, but I didn't think they looked realistic. All the reference photos I had showed loose, big things of cork and buoys and barrels and things like that thrown into them, whatever the crews had available. So I decided I would go with kind of a universal uh, sized cork type of arrangement, paint it the weather deck blue, and uh, when you're done they look like this. Kind of a gloppy mess, but it's okay. You'll touch them up later on, but uh, take these and throw them into all the baskets. And once they're in there, I hit them with some uh, super glue, ultra thin paint or thin super glue to like just kind of lock them in position. Then later I went and touched them up. Last thing to do was go ahead and install the main guns. Uh, Busting out the old good old orange glue because we could use it here at this point. And then uh, I'm going to put a drop of CA glue in the back. That will hold the gun in position until the orange glue actually sets up. Uh, they sit, they lock into position pretty well, but the uh, forward barrels, the barrels are still really heavy in it, and they have a tendency to want to tip over. So this is what I did to lock them into place. That's the back one, and then uh, we'll start out with the forward one on the bow, turret number one, because uh, turret number two obviously reaches over the top of it, and this is just the correct order to put it all in. This this worked out really well, I think. Obviously, you want to try and get your barrels pointed perfectly straight or whatever direction you want, and it was critical for the way I'm displaying the ship that the, all the barrels kind of line up and are as parallel as possible. It's a little bit difficult, but something you want to think about when you're putting this together. There you can see the stringiness from that orange glue. All right, drop the third one in. This is turret two, but third one is stolen, and that's it, man. That finishes the ship. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is say I'm sorry for the uh, shaky camera work. I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can to keep it steady and move along the ship in a smooth uh, fashion, but it's, it's really hard to do zoomed in all the way like this and get everything to fit in. The ship is 53 inches long and about 5 inches, 5 or 6 inches wide at the beam, and it's just impossible to sit in one spot 
and move along slowly and get the whole thing in one shot. It's just really difficult. But I am trying to do this because I don't want everyone to see the ship from just straight on. I don't want boring photographs. I don't want here's the side port and starboard. Here's the bow. Here's the stern. There you go. That's it. To me, that's really boring. Uh, this ship, in real life, if you ever get the chance to go and see it, you, you don't just walk up to it and see the whole thing. You, you just can't take it all in like that. You have to be like three miles away. So this is a little bit more what it would be like uh, if you were in person just looking at little areas of it. And there's a lot of really cool views uh, from different perspectives, and I'm trying to convey that here. So anyway, that's why I'm shooting it like this. Uh, some of you who followed along may have noticed I don't have any sailors on here. I bought a whole bunch of North Star sailors, and... I opted out of installing them because there it, it would be at least one more week, eight hours a day worth of work, getting those things taken off the sprues and painted up and then installed without busting anything. And right now, I just don't have that in me, and I really like the way the ship looks right now without them. So for the time being, I'm going to leave them out. Down the road, I might go ahead and paint them up and install them. We'll see about that. I do have to make a plexiglass case for the ship still, so that's going to be coming probably in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, I don't want it to get dusty, and I'm going to make a new one for the Arizona anyway. Uh, if they're done at the same time, you guys will see that in the next video that I put up about it. Um, I enjoyed almost every single part of this build, and I thought about it. I was like, what, is there anything that I would do differently if I had to build the entire ship all over again? And other than changing some of my techniques, honestly, the answer is no. Um, I might have tried to handle the Orlikan cannons differently. They were not fun. I did not enjoy putting them together. There's, You get 53 of them, and I think you have to put 49 of them together for the whole kit. And, which is good because you're going to lose some pieces here and there, and they provide you with plenty to uh, replace them with. But, man, they were extremely labor-intensive and very, very boring. I'd much rather spend my time building the Bofors all over again. And there were 20 Bofors. Each one of those builds into a really satisfying kit. I also did not like painting all those little ammo crates back there. Although you could have brush painted them, almost every single one of them were airbrushed. Um, the gray color on the bottom first, and then I masked them all off and airbrushed the lids on the weather deck blue color. Uh, speaking of the deck, as you can see, it's got wear and tear on it. I am very pleased with how the weathering turned out um, and the wear and tear that you would see, uh, similar to what I think would be on the real ship. I'm also pleased with, well, right here we're looking at uh, number 15, Bofor. You can see my dent sort of to the left there where the kamikaze plane hit. I tried to model that. Uh, those decals are, I think I mentioned earlier, they came from a model railroad set. Um, I have a train hobby shop down the street. I went and asked him if he had small decals with numbers on them, and he did. He only had two sets, and there was just enough to put numbers 1 through 20 on all 20 Bofors, but not on both sides on all of them because he didn't have, there was only so many ones. And so for all the teens, doubling that up was going to be a problem. But I noticed that detail in some photos, and I wanted to include that in this kit. Spent a lot of time weathering the hull, so that's why there's a lot of views of it here that you can see. Um, the ship doesn't have a flat hull. It's, it's not perfectly smooth. It's got a lot of bumps and nicks and dings and plating on it and uh, I did the best I could to model that. It's the SK-2 radar. I have a very detailed video on that thing. It turned out really well. Super pleased with the signal flags and the rigging. Um, when I did the rigging I had this feeling that like I wasn't doing enough which is probably true depending on what year the ship was rigged which you look at the antennas and everything but at the same time, I feel like I did enough for what my skill level would allow. And depending on how you look at the ship, there's a lot going on. It's pretty busy, and that's really satisfying. Uh, as you notice there, the fire hoses and the life rafts and everything, those are the ones that were molded onto the ship provided by Trumpeter. I did not use the Pontos-provided ones. The reason for that is I didn't think it was necessary. 
Uh, there's a lot of little details that Pontos provides you with that are meant to replace the kit provided detail. And in a lot of instances, the kit's detail is fine. There's, it's, it's totally adequate. You would literally be scraping off some plastic to replace it with a piece of photo etch that looked exactly the same. And so I opted out of that. It saved a lot of time. Uh, the propellers I've shown in the back, you can see up close here, they're a little bit blotchy. I did that on purpose. Uh, I wasn't really interested in trying to mold all the colors together uh, to get even tones. I wanted kind of a blotchy look. When you stand back a few feet from the model, they look it looks fantastic. When you get up close, you can kind of see a little bit more of what's going on right there. So that's why I did that. There's a bridge. Windows are a little foggy there from my fingerprints. Um, no, I did not use CA glue when I glued them in. I used Tester's clear window glue. They glued up, went in perfectly clear, no trouble. And a couple days later, I was using some CA glue near the bridge. And I don't know if I exhaled and it like blew into the bridge area or what, but it was just enough to make my fingerprints appear. I was really disappointed about it, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? Uh, you know, not every kid is perfect. There's plenty of mistakes on this one, and that's fine. One day I'll get that right. So here's some more views of the ship. I do want to comment that the, the lower railing on the main deck really helped bring all this alive and really added a lot to it. Uh, I've been staring at this ship for months now, pretty much in this state without the railing, and it looked great, but man, it, it changed dramatically when, when I installed that feature, so anyway, that's a, that was a worthwhile endeavor, and I think that's why the kit provides you with enough railing out of the box to go around the main deck, because it, it really does add a lot to it, just having it there. There you can make out some of the hull dishing on the front all the dings along the side here a lot of work went into that um, I did get the aft railing I did a better job you could see where the lines would go through the little uh, bollards there I think they're called bulwarks I ended the railing so that they bumped into them and secured to them like they are in the real ship on the bow I forgot to do that and the railings overlapping so one of these days I'll have to go ahead and change that you also can see in that panning shot there, the Bofors are a darker gray. I did that intentionally with all of the guns, except for the 5-inch guns. Uh, I wanted them to stand out. I was really concerned about them disappearing into the ship. So instead of being the uh, light ghost gray, they're, or I'm sorry, the, what do they want? Haze gray is what the colors are supposed to be. They're more of a uh, neutral gray color. And again, I did that just so that they would pop out on the model. There's all those anti-aircraft guns. Another look at the bow here. Here I think we take a good look. There's that hull dishing under the 63 that I did. That, that ended up being a really worthwhile endeavor. I'm glad that I did that. Those two cannons right on the front there ended up getting uh, taken out. When the ship was sailing to Japan, they went through a typhoon. A bunch of the green water came up over the bow there and they didn't knock them off their mounts but they damaged them to the point where they were beyond use which was kind of a bummer super pumped about how the uh, 16 inch guns turned out each one of those is their own fantastic little kit to build and highly detailed totally worth the time and effort that I put into them for sure last bags were good these are the ones provided by Ponto, so I'm happy with the angle. Floater baskets turned out nice with the floats installed in them loose. I'm glad I did that. See the brass bell there. Mark III gun directors. Each of these were a lot of work, primarily because of the radar, but uh, totally worth the effort when you're all said and done with it. Did some light chipping on the anchor. I don't know if you guys caught that earlier. That It's, it's real subtle detail but it can add a lot of life and realism to a model um, just go with a slightly darker color even though you would think it would be like metally or something but if you go with darker color it ends up looking really good so yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed this um, thank you very much for watching thanks you very much for 
following along this whole time. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them down below. Uh, feel free to go ahead and check out uh, the YouTube channel for the whole thing. Give it a like if you liked it. Um, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want. Down the road here, like I said, I'm going to come up with kind of a summary build video that hopefully shows the ship's construction from start to finish uh, in about 20 minutes to a half hour is what I'm going to try and do. I don't know when I'm going to get around to that, but uh, if you'd like to see something like that, go ahead and let me know. And uh, we'll do the best we can to get that knocked out for you. Uh, paint. I do want to comment about the paint. I went through five bottles of the gray paint for this, and the weather deck blue, I ran out. I actually had to custom mix two more bottles worth of that paint uh, to finish the ship because I ran out of it. So if you do tackle a ship like this down the road, make sure that you buy plenty of paint for it. Otherwise, yeah, you might run out and you'll have issues. Anyway, as I step around the workbench here and try and get the whole ship in a shot for one last look before we head on out here, I just want to say thank you all once again uh, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, next build's going to be the Titanic. We'll be starting that pretty soon. Talk to you later.